back to my channel and welcome to another TikTok hacks video. This one has a mix of a few cleaning hacks and then mostly kitchen related life hacks. There are almost 20 of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump right on in. If you enjoy this one, thumbs up, subscribe, all that, and let's get started. Now, as with the other TikTok hack videos that I have made, I will do my best to tag either the creator or the original video down below and then you could just fall down the little TikTok rabbit hole if you would like for yourself but I will try and tag as many as I can down in the description box. I'm gonna start with all of the hacks that are outside of the kitchen. I think there's like seven or eight of them because the majority of them do take place in the kitchen and they're very, very fast. So I'm just gonna do the outside the kitchen stuff first. This one brings us outside to my garage fridge. This is just like our extra and like entertaining drinks and things like that. But it's how to put a 12 pack in your fridge the easiest way to get it out of the box. What I want you to do, Open. On the one side, like so. And place it on the shelf where you're gonna put it. And push it as far back as you're going to want them to be. Then you're gonna open the front side. And all you're gonna do is push the cans and then pull the box. If you hold the cans, you don't even have to push anymore. You just hold them still and keep pulling the box and they come out just like that. And then it makes it easy if you had multiple boxes, you just put the next one beside it and go and then they're all in a line, neat and equal and it takes like five seconds. The next two are in my bathroom and one involves how you're supposed to tie your robe. Now you know how it usually feeds through the back and they just tie it around the front. Okay, so you have them through the back and then you just bring it around the front and tie it but you know how this like doesn't really stay closed all the way take it out okay loop it so it's coming around the front of your robe then close your robe however you normally would and pull them together to the front and then tie it off that's how you're supposed to tie your robe, apparently, is around the front. On to the next one, and that's about a Band-Aid. If you have a cut on your finger, but you still need to be able to bend your finger, that's what this one's for. What you're supposed to do is, if you have a sore and it makes it where you can't move your joint if you put an all Band-Aid on, take a Band-Aid, and before you take the paper off the back, you're just going to cut slits on both sides right up into where the pad is on both sides of this band-aid. But don't, don't cut the little pad though. Show you the band-aid, now it's got the flaps on both sides. And then you just peel off as you normally would. And then wherever, you know, your boo-boo is, you're gonna take it and you're gonna wrap each little individual strap around away from the joint so that way you can still bend your finger just like that the next hack is for anyone that uses a fan like this and you can also use your ac vent for this one i'll show you how to do that in a minute but it involves these little car clips right here first things first if you've never used these they come in a million cents they do have this little gauge on top that lets you do it stronger or not it's up to you however you want to do that but that does make it wear down faster as well if you go all the way to the strong this back part here, just pop it up and you hear the click. That means that this has started. And then just find a spot on your fan wherever you'd like and pop it in. I'm not gonna turn the fan on for the sake of the noise for you guys, but once you turn the air on and it starts circulating, it will push out of this the same way it does the vent in your car and it will push the fragrance throughout your room. All of my vents are in the ceiling, but if I wanted to, I could wedge the second one of these up there, but you can also do this if you don't wanna do a fan and you do have vents all around your house, you can do the same thing with your AC vent inside your home. The next hack takes us out into my dining room and my dining room chairs. They are a very light color, but as you can tell, they are filthy. And apparently you could take this specific glass cleaner from the Dollar Tree and one of their scrub brushes or any scrub brush you really want Spray this all over the chair, scrub it in, and it should take all of that away. We shall see. I'm gonna try these two stools, but here's a before of this one and a before of this one. I'm gonna spray them, scrub them, put you guys to music for a second, and then I'll show you the after. 
this is a good moment for my disclaimer. Do not trust everything you see on TikTok or anywhere on the internet. I've been bit by that numerous times. Know your home, know your furniture before you try anything like this. Clearly these chairs are dirty and I'm in a house with five kids. I am willing to try this, but please use your own discretion before you try anyone's advice from the internet. They are both now dry and they do look really good. Like I could see something right here, but otherwise it took almost every bit of that off of those stools. And before you say that I switched the stools, you could see the same bite marks down here on this side. And my other two stools are over here looking absolutely horrid and neither one of these were the same marks from the other one. So you could tell I'm not lying. The last hack outside the kitchen can translate back into the kitchen or even the bathroom. So that's why I am doing this one last and it is how to get the right containers for a drawer that you're trying to organize. What the hack says is get a piece of paper and cut it to the same size as the drawer. You could use parchment paper or printer paper, whatever kind of paper you wanna use, but what you're going to do is lay it inside the drawer and cut it to the exact size of the drawer. Now the reason I said outside my kitchen is because these are the two drawers I need to organize. Now as you can see, there's clearly no organization to these drawers whatsoever, but they are mostly full of little gadgets that I could use several different size containers to organize this better. Step one, empty the drawer. I'm gonna use, because it's a very long drawer, I'm gonna use the parchment paper, but my parchment paper roll is just the tiniest bit too long. So, I'm gonna put the paper in. Mark it on this side. And then push it against the wall so I can mark just how much it needs to be cut off on that side. Now go back, put it back in your drawer once you have it cut out, test it out, make sure that it is the right size for that specific drawer. If you wanna go one further, take a pencil or a pen and take your paper up the side of your drawer because then you can mark on it the height of your drawer. So that way you know how tall your drawer is as well. What you do is you take this with you as you see me doing here. You take it with you to whatever store you're doing. I'm using Target. You could use Walmart. The container store is fantastic to do this hack with. But you bring it with you and you lay out whatever containers that you're wanting so that way you know that you have an exact fit when you come home and then your drawer will look perfectly organized and you won't have a bunch of containers to return. Moving into the kitchen related hacks and the only reason I'm calling this one kitchen because it can be whole house as well is because I store my lighter in my kitchen and I light most of my candles in my kitchen but it is a hack for lighting a three wick candle. This one is mostly for people who light their candles with a match or one of the sticks that burns down really quickly, not necessarily for a lighter using person. And it does need to be a three wick. And I will even go further to specify, I have a bunch of three wick candles in my house. I tried this on several and it only works on a choice few. Let's see if I can show you. All right, light the candle. And then turn the wick. And I light the other one. And then you turn it again and it'll grab the other one. And it lights just like that. This is the crispy treat scent little $3 and change candle out of Walmart. And the wicks are closer together. I've learned if the wicks are nice and close together and symmetrical, this works. Otherwise, it ain't gonna happen. For fun and for science, Bath and Body Works candle. Light it. No, see, they're too far apart. It's just not, it's not gonna happen. Aluminum foil. You know how when you go to pull out a piece and the whole thing will come out with it? There's a way to stop that. On the sides of boxes like these, parchment paper has them too, and plastic wrap, they all have it. It's this little half moon thing right here, this little half circle. And if you push it in like that, it grabs the bar in there, so that way it doesn't come out like it was doing before. And you do it on both sides, like that. And then it holds the bar in there. I did rip off some of that foil because the next two involve foil. The first one is how to use foil to sharpen your scissors. My scissors are garbage. They have not been sharpened since the day that I've gotten them. And they, I mean, they cut 
okay when it comes to paper, but if I'm cutting open something, it typically stops and doesn't work that well, so we are going to sharpen these. The easiest way to sharpen your scissors is to just start cutting a piece of tin foil repeatedly over and over and over again, and it will sharpen your scissors. So just take it and just start hacking away at the tin foil. If you did it enough times and you did it right, it should cut a lot better and a lot easier. The next one that involves foil, I am mentioning the foil because I'm gonna show you that there's two different hacks on TikTok, one that works and one that doesn't. This one is for stainless steel sharp knives in your kitchen, like my bread knife here. If you could see right here, you could see the rust stains on it. What she says to do is to scrub the rust stain with the tin foil, but it does absolutely nothing. And even if you ball it up, it does absolutely nothing. So I'm gonna show you what does get stains off because there's another TikTok hack for that. I'm gonna use the same knife that I'm gonna be working with to cut the lemon in half, but you need half a lemon and baking soda, and that's all you're gonna need. And you could see all right here there's rust stains. Right here there's a big one. So I'm gonna focus on that one first and show you guys. Take the lemon. Put a little bit of lemon juice down and put some baking soda on it. Take your lemon and scrub the baking soda into the stainless steel. Okay. Now, this way you guys can see that I'm not lying. There's no time lapse or anything. The rust is gone from that spot. All right, I did both sides, scrubbed all the rust, and then just wash it as you normally would. And if you can see from the camera, the rust is gone. Okay. Since we just worked with the lemon, I'm gonna keep going with the citrus for a second, because I do have another thing with the lemon and with an orange. You know how when you open an orange and it comes out into the segments, but it's a pain to peel it? There's a way that you could just cut this and open it and just flops the orange right on out. I'm gonna try it. You would think you'd wanna cut from this top piece down, but you actually wanna cut straight across the middle. So it cut all the segments in half, that's what we wanted it to do. And what you're supposed to be able to do is just pull at it, which, hang on, I'm gonna get my hands in there. You're supposed to be able to pull at it, and the orange will just pop off. Ooh, nope and it'll just pop out into segments. I like that. And then you could just snack on it. Now I've seen where it's easier, like this is a navel orange. So I've seen where it's easier with cuties, not easier with cuties, but it doesn't really matter. Either way, this is still a lot easier than normally how you would peel an orange. But the one just literally like flops open and you just pull them out. I will tag that one in the description below. So let's talk about your juicer because if you've been using it like I've been using it the entire time, you're also doing it wrong. When I typically use the juicer, I will take half of whatever I'm using and I will put it face down and then squeeze. Apparently that's wrong. What you're supposed to do is actually put it face up, the cut side up, because then this pushes into the actual flesh of the lemon and you get more juice out. Two identical bowls half of the exact same lemon. We're gonna go my normal way into this bowl. Okay. And then this is what the fruit looks like afterwards. This, they said, if you wanna go one step further to make sure you get all the juice and so it lays a little more flat in there, cut the bottom part, see right now it's still only white, but cut into the bottom part so it lays flat. Place that into your juicer, and then squeeze all the juice out. Okay. All right, now, this is this fruit that is that fruit. Clearly, this one works. 
and you do get more juice. On the floor now to try the next one, and it is a way to clean your stainless steel. It is supposed to be one of the absolute best ways to clean it, to get the shine and all the fingerprint repelling and everything like that. And honestly, it sounds really weird to me too. So trust me, we're both in the same boat of how weird it sounds. Equal parts, white vinegar, and olive oil. That's all you need. This is the only spray bottle I have that's available. There was no Dawn left in here. It was completely cleaned out. So I'm gonna say that first, because as you can see, there's no bubbles in there of the Dawn, so. But this is equal parts of the white vinegar and the EVOO. I have two ounces of each in here. It says to shake it really well and then use a dry microfiber to buff it in. The state of my stainless steel beforehand. One note, you do have to go with the grain. Do not go against the grain or this definitely will not work. That is still just wet, that's why that streak is there. I will see if it continues to have that streak across it. But from the actual naked eye, it doesn't once it starts to dry it out. It actually looks really good. I can still see one kind of bar of a streak right there. Otherwise, it looks really good. Am I gonna make the switch to this? No. Does it work? Yes, and if you like the more natural cleaning products, this is a definite win for your stainless steel. Entire head of lettuce, the easiest way to get the core out of this. I've done this hack for years, but not everything that's common sense to you might be common sense to someone else. It might not be something that they've learned in their life. That's what these hacks are for, is to expose them to everyone. So before you say, I've done that for years, so have I, but someone else might not have. So, but literally just take this and bang it onto your cutting board, your counter, something. Just bang that part really hard. And then the core, literally, will come right out. It's that simple. This next one is for anyone that dips pretzel rods around the holidays or baby showers or whatever you would dip them for. Instead of dipping the pretzel rod into the cup of melted chocolate and then dealing with the mess, just take parchment paper. Yes, I wet the underside of mine so it would stay still. And all you do is roll the pretzel stick in the melted chocolate. It coats it so much easier. You have more control over your pretzel stick. Obviously you could decorate it however you're going to with whatever embellishments. Like I'm gonna do a little bit of Halloween colors, but it's that easy to do. Now, I know when you melt it in a jar, you could just keep putting the jar back and forth in the microwave, and you see this is solid on the parchment paper. Watch. Okay, parchment paper, throw it in the microwave, and we're ready to go all over again. So you can use this method. The next one is probably one of my favorites, and I've been doing this one for a while too, but it is how to get tomato paste out of the can. Instead of sitting there digging it and scraping it, there's a very fast, easy way to do this. This way, you guys will be able to see the can. So you know how if you use your can opener and you could cut this way, or you can cut this way. You're going to use both techniques for this hack. Pick one side of the can, and you're gonna cut into it this way. All the way around, make sure it is a complete match all the way around, okay? Then, flip your can over and cut it open the other way, like this, all the way around, and make sure that it comes completely off, okay? And you can save that little bit of tomato paste if you want. Okay, now what you're gonna do with your bowl, your pot, whatever you're putting it into, go to this side and just push down on this lid and it will push everything out. If you're lucky, the lid will stay in, otherwise just pull it off the top. But there is the entire can and you didn't have to dig around in there. This was something my grandmother taught me years and years ago and it's surfacing up on TikTok, that's why I'm gonna bring it up. But apparently you can measure vanilla extract with the lid because this is supposed to be one measured teaspoon on the lids. So I have the one teaspoon right here. This is almost gone, by the way, so this is gonna be a little bit of a struggle, but if you go all the way to the top of the lid, it should be one teaspoon of vanilla. Oop, and I spilled it. But there you go, one teaspoon. The other bottle was Aldi and it did work. This is McCormick, all their bottles are the same, the lids are the same. Yes, this is rum extract for making butterbeer. 
but it's what I have right now on hand. So all the way to the top of this little red lid, pour it in and it fills it too. So McCormick is even closer to the one teaspoon, but it is basically spot on. The next hack involves olive oil, and you know how if you pour the bottle, it all comes out too fast? There's a way to stop that. Brand new bottle. I can't even open it, hang on a second. This little piece in here that you pull out, keep that. I'll show you what to do with it. I have to cook dinner in a few, so this way the olive oil doesn't go to waste. Normal, just pull the tab, it pours very quickly. What you do instead, take the little piece that you pulled out this way, flip it over, and then you pop it back down inside there like that. And now you have more control over how much comes out. I'm about to start my dishwasher for the night and that brought up another hack I wanted to mention with you guys. When you use your dishwasher pod, apparently you're not supposed to put it in that little door like that because then it just comes out these two little holes while it's cleaning and it's just not as effective. The best thing you could do according to TikTok is actually put it right down there. See it down there? And just let it run with normal cycle. They also did say to put it in here. I don't know about all that. But I have done this about three or four times now and I've noticed no difference. It cleans just as well, if not a little bit better. So just don't put it in there, put it down there. As I did say though, I do know that this one does work, but do not put the pod on your heating element. Like mine has that circle down there. Make sure it's all the way toward the middle or at least just not touching that bar. If you've watched the other videos on YouTube I've made about TikTok hacks, you know that I prefer not to end on a hack but on a little good piece of information, like what I shared that coffee creamer is mostly vegetable oil. Well, something else I learned on TikTok is actually about sriracha. And yeah, this might make me sound stupid for a minute, but this is not usually for me. My husband's the one that has me buy this, and he'll say, hey, I need a bottle of sriracha. It is the one with the rooster and the green lid. This is what I know to be sriracha. Did you know that sriracha is actually a sauce, not a brand name? I thought it was just the brand name of this bottle right here. Like when my husband tells me to add Cholula to the shopping list, he doesn't tell me to add the hot sauce that I know that he likes. No, he refers to this as the Sriracha like a lot of people do, but it's actually a sauce, not a brand. I didn't know that. But that is going to do it for this one. There is so much stuff to learn over on TikTok, but I know a lot of you do not have all the time to go digging around for the good hacks, and that's why I make these videos. I try them out, I test them for you, so you know if you need to waste your time or not. And there is a bunch of good stuff to learn over there. I mentioned my mascara I use. I learned that from TikTok. My actual leggings I'm wearing today, I will show you in a second. They are the closest dupe so far to Lululemon leggings. If you know anything about Lululemon leggings, they're over $100 a pair. Mine were like $24 off of Amazon. I learned about them through TikTok. They feel like butter. They are fantastic. So again, there is tons of stuff to learn over there. If you guys want more videos like this one, I will happily make them. Just let me know down below. If you enjoyed this one, thumbs up, subscribe for more like it, and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys. Almost forgot to show you the leggings, but it is just normal black leggings. They feel so soft. The seams are great. They're not see-through. They are high-waisted. Just absolutely fantastic leggings.